Hello, I'm Sally Roth, and I'm here in Wichita, Kansas, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for the Sunday Devotional. Today, I would like to tell you some stories about Georg Safke. Georg was only 11 years old when Germany entered the third year of the war in 1942. That same year, a young Polish couple moved into the house where the Safke family lived in Germany. Georg's father had passed away and his mother worked long hours to support the family, leaving Georg at home alone before and after school. Georg and the new couple soon became friends and spending many hours together after Georg returned home from school. Not long after the Polish couple moved in, a young woman, the young woman gave birth to their first child, a baby boy. When the child is about a year old, it became gravely ill and passed away. The parents and the neighbors were devastated and Georg's mother was unable to attend the funeral because she couldn't take off from work. However, Georg chose to support the family by attending. Fortunately, the funeral was held in the morning hours, which allowed for Georg to go to the service before school. While Georg walked to the funeral service that morning, he crossed paths with the school teacher, who was a former major in the army and a member of the Nazi party. The teacher knew Georg and was headed to the funeral and he did not approve. When Georg arrived in class, the teacher singled him out and said, look at Sofke there, he calls himself a German. I don't suppose he's noticed we are in the fifth year of a war, for it seems he attends the funeral services of our enemies. Well, Georg knew all too well about the tragedy of war, as his older brother had been killed during the conflict. Choosing to support the young couple, despite being persecuted by the teacher in front of his classmates, might have been a difficult choice for most 11-year-olds, or even most of us. However, it wasn't difficult for Georg. As an adult, he reflected on his decision that day in the classroom, and he said, and I quote, I had learned the commandment of the Lord, love your enemies, and in my home, the word of God was held in the greatest of esteem. Not long after Georg confronted his teacher, defending the Polish friends and family, and experienced an even greater challenge. The family lived in a small village, a community of about 2,000. Georg's father had passed away when Georg was only seven years old. Although Georg was the youngest of six children, his father's death forced him to grow up quicker than most children his age to assist his mother in helping provide for the family. One of Georg's first spiritual experiences happened while receiving communion during a church service in 1942. The experience compelled him to become more involved in the local congregation at a time when his classmates were attending Hitler Youth Meetings. Georg refused to attend the Hitler Youth Meetings until it was required by all German youth to attend. Soon the meetings were least of his concern. In January 1945, the Safke family was forced from their home and village as news about the Red Army advancing made the village residents quickly flee to avoid the path of the Red Army. Georg and his mother were among thousands of refugees fleeing Germany. Over a two-month period of time, Georg and his mother walked 500 miles. Reflect on that right now. I'm in Wichita, and a 500-mile walk would take me to Denver. Walking with only the clothes on my back and an old pair of shoes. He said the more they walked, the further they fled from their home, the worse the conditions developed along their trek. The winter weather froze their bones, the lack of food left them starving, and most nights, desperation of those around him was terrifying for the young boy. Refugees were not permitted to walk along the paved roads. Those roads were for German military and trucks and convoys. Georg and thousands of others were left to the dusty, ill-maintained side roads. These roads were jammed with fleeing, freezing, 
starving people, including Georg and his mother. As though these conditions weren't challenging enough, twice they found themselves positioned between the German army and the Russian army and barely escaped death. It wasn't uncommon for Georg and his mother to go days without eating. Once he had gone several days without eating and simply could not go any further. He sat down alongside the road and cried. He was so hungry. He was so tired. His mother could give him nothing, but she looked him in the face and she said to him, God will not leave us alone. This single statement gave Georg the strength to continue. It gave him the courage to beg for bread for the very first time. He said, quote, I will never forget the first house into which I went. I will never forget many, many other things on this long, desperate trip. Their escape route led them through Czechoslovakia up to the German border of Bavaria. There at the border, they received news that the war had ended. They were not permitted to leave Czechoslovakia for Bavaria immediately, but one night in March, Georg and his mother slipped across the border into Germany. They spent time in several refugee camps before returning to a village in Bavaria. Georg was 14 years old. His family was scattered due to the war. His older brother, had been killed in 1942. His two sisters remained in the Soviet occupied area. Hedwig, with four children, made it to hard, the hard trek west. And his brother, Gerhard, had been sent to the front at 16 years of age and was in a Russian prison camp at War End. This was a strikingly different reality than most 14 year olds face. However, Georg still remembered that profound communion service that led him to want to serve the Lord. He longed to work for the church full time. While living in Bavaria, the local congregation was 40 miles away. They didn't stop, that didn't stop the Sofke family. Georg and his mother and brother would walk for two hours to board a train and there they would gather up with a small church group. It was also during this time that he met Thea that would later become his wife. As an adult, Georg served as a full-time appointee in our church, serving through Europe with significant time in Germany. He led youth camps, young adult retreats, reunions, planted churches, chaired more church meetings than we can count. Georg passed away just two summers ago and with his passing, a treasure trove of stories and memories were shared among many of the former youth and young adults who were impacted by Georg. These stories include youth from the British Isles to his homeland in Germany. May his experience as a young boy living in a time of war give us all courage to make responsible choices in our lives. This story must make us all wonder what kind of ancestors will we be? What kind of stories will our actions leave behind for future generations? Thank you for listening.